Have you ever wondered how it is possible that two people can have different emotions about the very same situation or person? The reason is that we have different interpretations of reality. This is an easy way to see this. Think of someone who your whole office is split about. Imagine half of the office that finds this person really admirable. They really look up to this person. They think that this person is so vibrant, that they're just incredible. And then think of that other half of your colleagues who think that this person is actually brash, that they're too pushy, they're too arrogant, they're very mean with others. They're nobody you would want to look up to. In that situation, it's very easy to see that the reason for people treating this character differently is due to the difference in their interpretations. Why is it important to understand interpretations? Because our emotions are a product of our interpretations. We feel upset because we interpret reality in a certain way that is dictated by the environment where we grew up, a culture where we grew up. Our coping mechanisms, our shadow material, our conscious material, the identification with specific character traits that we have, our values. We feel angry because we interpret a situation in a specific way. And even though we might recognise that it has to do with our interpretations, one thing that often goes unnoticed is that we believe that our interpretations equal reality, whereas they don't. There may be multiple interpretations of the same situation, as far as we have seen, and much human suffering is resultant from the fact that we believe that our interpretation is the only and true one, and all the rest are not as true as our own. What I wanted to teach effectively is diversity and respect for a variety of perspectives. As an English teacher, I recognise that interpretations hinge on language. Therefore, when we talk, we are interpreting something all the time. I think it's very important to teach human beings who have chosen to come to our classroom to be effective and compassionate by sharing with them this understanding that interpretations are multiple, that we can interpret one and the same situation in a variety of ways, that language is relative, and that we can interpret in a way that is correspondent with our mood, our physical health, our mental health, our upbringing, and all the other factors that I have mentioned in this video. Here is an activity that I like to do with my students to help them recognise that interpretations are invented, not given, and that they don't equal reality. I ask my student to think about three situations they have recently observed. Situations can be benign, they can be very trivial. For example, earlier today I met a neighbour who said hello to me. If I want my student to integrate specific grammar or vocabulary into their response, to practice this specific language in question while also doing this activity, I may ask them to think of situations that they observed yesterday if what we want to practice is past tenses, or situations that they observed before they got into university if I want them to practice past perfect, for example. I may ask them to think about situations involving flowers if I want them to practice types of flowers like carnation, rose, tulip, etc. And then I ask the student to come up with three distinct interpretations for every situation. For example, if the situation was, I met my neighbour and he gave me a very long gaze in the morning, earlier today, here is how I might interpret it. One, he is a stalker. This is actually something that many people may think. Two, he's a friendly guy. He really likes having conversations and he might be missing the human element in most conversations. So that's why he goes deep in with his attention into every hello that he says. And three, he might not even have noticed me. He might have been doing something extra in his mind, maybe thinking about his breakfast. And then when he saw me, I was just someone who rose on his way. He just looked at me just like you would at the sky or something. Can you see how those different interpretations are very distinct in their energetic signature and how you think the person treated you? Can you see what different responses might arise out of 
each of those interpretations. I'm going to play you this activity run with an actual student of mine. My student's name is Natalie. She is 15 years old. We've been having lessons for about a year now. What I want you to bear in mind is that Natalie was very brave and inspired by an opportunity to participate in my video. If you choose to leave a comment, please bear in mind that an actual alive person might be watching this. So please be respectful. So we're going to work with interpretations for a bit. Can I ask you to grab a pen? Yeah, yeah. And now on a piece of paper, list three actions that you observed people do recently. Maybe you saw someone on a train and they did something. Maybe they started reading a book. This doesn't have to be anything weird. This could be very trivial things. Or maybe your teacher did something in the lesson. Maybe they were sitting and kind of moving their leg. They were twitching their leg like this. <laughs> Some people do that. So you could write that down. Hmm. That people started to do recently. Hmm. Not just started, but maybe you saw them. You saw them doing this. Maybe your friend hmm. was fidgeting in the chair. Okay, so the first one looking through the window, it was, uh, yeah, it was just, uh, it was really strange because, uh, yeah, I was sitting in the lesson and I just, uh, I, I just check out what's going outside and I saw a man who just uh, uh, go, just went somewhere and uh, he suddenly just, st just stops. He uh, and he started to look into the uh, our class window. Fell asleep. It's uh, about my uh, friends, classmates uh, that usually fell asleep in the lessons. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that usually does what? Usually fall. fall. Yes, and that is she. Fall asleep. Fall asleep. Fall, falls. Yes. Fall, yes. Falls asleep. Can you say that again? Um about my friend who usually falls asleep. Right. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, the last one is uh, build a fort. It's about uh, my classmate. It's uh, the other that and it was on the PE lesson. Yeah. And uh, there was a lot of um, quite big sticks. So he started to build the fort with them. I see. Well, interesting. So let's just explore this because we're dealing with interpretation. We really want to understand why people act the way they do. So my big question is why? And I want you to think the two alternative interpretations for why this might have happened. And here's how I want you to start your sentences. So he might have um, done something. So maybe he might have wanted, he might have forgotten. So you just use this construction, he might have plus verb in the third form mm. all right okay so you can take your time to prepare mm, i think uh, i will start if it'll okay. be like improvisation <laughs> yes. okay yes that's more interesting mm, so the first uh, i start with my uh, thoughts about it mm, it's like uh, do you have like sometimes like feeling when you see the open window like uh, do you usually interest in what's going on inside Absolutely. Always. Yes. I always am. Yes. So it's maybe sometimes like this. Uh, if a person can see uh, that the window is open, so they can check what's going on uh, inside this building. Yeah. Yes. So I think uh, it's, uh, will, it will be interesting. So uh, 
in the first one he might uh, have uh, wanted to check what's going on second uh, uh second okay maybe he's a stalker <laughs> stalker stalker yeah, stalker yeah so uh, he might have uh, wanted to find someone oh yeah. okay <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that sounds uh, more creepy than it was. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that is interesting. Can you repeat your two interpretations? I will write up everything you say. I'll be the secretary. Um, uh, he might have wanted to check what's going on inside. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And uh, second, uh, he might have wanted to find someone. Hmm. <laughs> Which is way creepier than the first one. Yeah. Right. Okay. So here is my question. Uh, what do you think this activity teaches us? Teach us um, mm, to not to judge uh, people from the first, uh, first look. Yeah. First, uh, mm, first experience with them. I forgot how to say that. First impress. First impression, based on our first yeah. impression. Based on the first impression, yeah. Wow, so it is actually about judging, isn't it? I think, yes. So what can we do to figure out the truth? Can we do anything to figure out the truth for why people do things? Just uh, ask this person. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we you know, we don't really know what's going on inside uh, as this person's mind. Can you think of a situation when um, someone did something and then you explained it to yourself in a certain way, but then you discovered that this person did something, did that thing for another reason? Mm. Let me make an example. Hey, oh, yeah, uh, it's continue. It's a really simple thing, like uh, uh, my friend uh, ignore me for some Sorry, time. My, yeah. my, fr my friend does what? Uh, igno ignored me. If, the, if, uh, if she did in the past, then yes, yeah. ignored. Ignored. So, uh, yeah, uh, for the like uh, first uh, thing that I uh, can say about it, that uh, I did something bad, yeah. And uh, uh, this person tired from me. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, the reason was that uh, it's not was about me. It was about this person. Mm -hmm. That uh, this person needs some time to. It, it, yeah, it's quite simple. It's, it's okay. Yeah, sometimes we need to rest from the public or something like this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so it was my. Yeah, real example. You can run this activity with any level of English. You can run it with mixed groups because the output of the language will be dependent on that student's linguistic capacity. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Lilia from Intelligent. I'll see you next time. Take care.